Now that Bullseye has this new background image, the black text is kind of hard to read. To fix this, we need to make the text stand out better. Once again, we'll use some built-in methods to change the text appearance so that it's legible against the background. Specifically, we want to change three things. First, change the color to white. Second, change it to use a different font. And third, add a drop shadow. Let's see how we can do this with Swift UI. Okay, so we're back in Bullseye, and we want to make this text here, put the Bullseye as close as you can to pop out a little bit. So let's try to do this through the Canvas Editor first. So I'm going to Command click on that, and I'm going to click Show Swift UI Inspector. So you can see here I have an option to set the color to white. That's good. Let me load up the properties again. But if I scroll down through these properties, I don't see any options for setting the shadow of this text. Now, in general, you're going to find with Swift UI, you can do everything you want through code, but you can only do a subset of those things through this visual editor. And maybe they'll be adding more to this in the future, but there are some times where you just kinda, you're going to have to write code if you want to do something. Now, there is a way to create a shadow, but we got to do it through code. So again, to learn how to do this, we would go to the developer documentation, and we know we want to set the background color on text. So we're going to go to Views and Controls, and we're going to find text, and I'm just going to search for shadow. Okay, and we found a option here for setting the shadow. It looks like it takes a color, a radius, an X, and a Y offset. Okay, well, let's give this a try. So right after this line that sets the foreground color, we're just going to hit Enter and call another method. And we're going to call shadow, and the color will be color dot black, the radius will be 5, and the X and Y offset will be 2. And now you can see here it's very subtle, but there's a little bit of a black shadow underneath here that helps it pop out a little bit from the background. We also want to change the font of this text. There wasn't a way to do that with a pop-up, so again we got to go back to the developer documentation, and we're going to just hit the back button here to get back up to the text view we were looking at, and just search for font. And there's font weight we don't want that we want this plain old font here. We see a method here called font and it takes a font. Well, to learn about font, we can actually click on this. We're gonna have to scroll through here. It says getting standard fonts. We don't want a standard font. We want a system font. So there's one here called a uh, custom. We'll get to custom font with a given name and size. And it uh, looks like to create a custom font, you just pass it a name and a size. Now your next question is, well, how do I know what fonts are available? And I don't know if this is in the documentation or not, I don't think it is, but there is a handy website you can use called iosfonts.com. And this shows you all of the fonts that are available on iOS, including what versions of the SDK they're available in. And you can scroll through here and see what you like. We're going to use this one here called Arial Rounded MT Bold. So if you want to use it in your app, you just got to make sure that you use this exact name for the font, including spacing. So this is what we're going to use when we create our font. In fact, let me just copy that. Okay, let's go back to Xcode. And now we're going to add one more line to put together everything we just learned. So remember, there's a method we can use here called font. And to get a font, we do font.custom. And for the name, we paste in what we got from iosfonts.com. And for size, we put the size of the font in points. We'll use 18. And now you can see here the text has a different font, and it's bigger, it's white, it's shadowed. It's looking pretty good. And so now we're going to be able to take what we want here, because we want a couple different areas of this app to look this exact same way. We want the 1 and the 100 areas here to look exactly the same. So if I paste those lines here, now they look that same way. That's great, but now our code is getting cluttered and it also violates the DRY, don't repeat yourself rule. So what can we do about this? Fortunately for us, there is a way to avoid this duplication with Swift UI. But before we talk about how to do this, you need to understand a little more about Swift. To solve this problem, you're going to have to define your own custom object in Swift. And actually, you've already seen an example of how to define an object going all the way back to when you first started. Remember that the starter project included the definition of a simple object called content view. 
Let's take a close look at this code, starting with the struct keyword. There are several different types of objects in Swift, and two of the most common ones are struct and class. You'll learn more about the differences between these later in this learning path, but for now, all you need to know is that this object is a struct object. Next, it has the name of the object, which in this case is content view. Next, there is a colon, which you can think of as is a. So this means content view is a view. After that, you put two curly braces, and inside you can place any properties or methods of the object. The reason I'm reminding you of the syntax to define your own object is because in order to solve this problem, you're going to need to define your own object that follows some special rules. The easiest way to understand this is to see it in action, so let's dive back into the code. To solve this problem of duplicated code, we need to create a new object. Now I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to create this new object within the body of content view. This makes it so the object I'm about to create is only available inside the content view object. I could also create the object out here to make it available anywhere in the app, but I'm sure that we'll only need this object inside content view, so let's put it there. Okay, so what we just did here is we made an object of the struct type. We named it label style, and we said it is a view modifier. View modifier is a type of object whose job is to receive a view, style it up just the way you want, and return the newly styled view. It turns out that view modifier is an example of a protocol. You'll learn more about protocols later in this learning path, but for now think of protocols as just a set of properties or method that you promise to include as part of your code. Now, in the case of view modifier, if your label style object wants to be a view modifier, you have to add a particular method to your object in order to fulfill that promise. That method is named body, and it needs to be written exactly like the following. So here's a function named body, and it should take a single parameter, which is the content that you should style. Your job is to take that content, call any methods you want to style it up, and then return the newly styled content. And to do this, we can simply reuse all the lines of code that we wrote before. So I'm literally just going to copy that, go up here, we're going to say return content, and then we just do all that stuff all over again. So now that you've created your fancy new view modifier, let's see how we can use it to clean up our code. So we're going to find our old styling code here, and we're going to delete it. And then all of it can be replaced by one call. We call modifier, and then we pass the name of the view modifier to use, which is in this case, label style. And it applies that style to that label. And now we can repeat this for these other sections here using that style for each one. So if I save this and resume the automatic previewing, it works. And just to show you how easy it is while we're on this, we're going to go ahead and apply the style to the score and round labels just by pasting that line twice. And nice, those are looking good too. Congratulations, you've created your first view modifier in Swift. To sum it up, you've created a view modifier called label style. Label style takes a view and changes the font, color, and shadow so that it looks just the way we want for normal labels to look like in Bullseye. 